great music, if nothing else, on the morning dash this week. Final day of glorious Goodwood. The weather has turned again. Man, it's been up and down, isn't it? Dave Orton with you and a stellar panel for the next hour or so, if you're watching on the Racing Post YouTube channel. It's in association with Unibet, as you can see behind me. Like, subscribe, comment and share. Get those comments flying up. Final day naps. How are we approaching it? With trepidation? Or are you going in brave? We will find out the winners, according to the panel, of seven races coming your way, starting off as ever at 1.50. Right, housekeeping out the way. Who am I joined by? Brett Williams again. You're Batman. You weren't sure if you were. <laughs> Toned down the colour slightly, but still bring it a bit. I'm delighted yeah, we like, to you know, Me and Maddie sort of got, both got the memo. We'll obviously come through in a minute. But no, it's good to be here for the final day. Looking forward to what's set to be another cracker of a day's racing. Obviously, the weather's been quite an integral part of the, of the whole week, and I think that's going to really play out again today in the, in the ultra-competitive um, Stewards Cup. And that's been a good week so far, some good performances and some very good horses, and looking forward to the last day. The treble didn't land mm. yesterday. One always lets you down, doesn't it? Nostrum, of course, was the, was the first leg of it. I guess people started to do the doubles after that as well, didn't they? Yeah, that's it. I mean, Lee Seifel Princess got the job done. She, she did it really well in that, in that King George the fifth stakes. And um, no, good performance from her. Yeah, and Hamish as well. Mm, got it yeah. over the line. Here they are, the Racing Post's finest. More colour from Maddie, yeah. I love it. I'm just advertising the Barbie movie, you know, yeah. do, doing my bit. <laughs> Great on the train. promos everywhere for that, <laughs> even on the morning dash. Kills, uh, you, you didn't get the memo, the Barbie memo? Well, I was on pink yesterday, funny enough. <laughs> I've only got one pink shirt. I can't wear two days on this one. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm the only one that fits anyway. All right, great stuff. Right, the, the panel is here. All right, Brett, uh, you've been giving us offers every day. Before we go to them, Kills a word about the weather. You Finally, your doomsday prediction is here. Well, the doomsday predict it also happened on Wednesday, didn't it? Like, you know, well, I mean, but it sort of didn't. Because but was that the same? I'm going to take you to task about that. Go on, because then. I am 10 minutes away, I'm staying with the course. It rained at 6 this morning and it's been brutal ever since. On Wednesday, it did dry up again and we had some hope for a little while. It was when we arrived on course that it battered down. So this has been all the way through. Yeah, I mean, it has been all the way through so far. It is supposed to rain pretty much on and off all day. Uh, Wednesday, it got very, very sticky, didn't it? And it's going to get worse today because the ground's already been opened up pretty much across the track. So uh, it's going to be hard work out there. You know, we're expecting some like conditions. I think so. It's, um, it's going to be interesting for us reporters anyway. It will yeah. be gone with the high heels, the trainers on and trudging out and trying to get some, get some quotes on the winners. But um, yeah, I think you've got, to, you've got to be looking at horses who are proven in these conditions, especially when it gets this bad. And Goodwood's very much a specialist track when that happens anyway. And you, you, no pressure on you, Maddie, but people would be expecting a, a glorious double here because your tipping yeah. hat was on, and, and, and well and truly so, on, on Tuesday, wasn't it? So, got some another big prize for us? Yes. Teased and it's the charity bet as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll be giving you those, of course. 25 quid has been going each day to Racing Welfare, courtesy of Unibet. Quite a few have landed as well. Let's see if we can get them in. But what are the offers today, Mr Williams? Do your bet. Here we go. So if you look at page 17 of today's Racing Post, there is the full look at all of today's exclusive Unibet offers. Go on to unibet.co.uk forward slash enclosure and you can get all of today's specials and offers. I'll give you just a few uh, details in the nutshell. We are super boosting all the runners in the three o'clock today, of course, uh, this afternoon. Extra places each way in the first race at 150, paying four places each way in that. Four places in the 225, which is an ultra competitive handicap uh, over a mile and six. Six places each way in the Stewards Cup and then five places each way in the finale at 20 past five. Also, if you have a bet in the 150 and you back the second or the third horse, we will give you your money back as cash. And there is even more. How about that? We just keep giving here at Unibet. There it is, as if by magic. If you open an account with us and your horse gets beaten in the, your first bet, we will be giving you your money back as a bonus up to £40 plus a £10 casino bonus as well. I mean, what more could you ask for? Absolutely nothing is your answer. You haven't tuned in to QVC if you've just turned on right <laughs> now, but uh, it's fair to say they're all out there for you. Right, those are the offers. Before we move on to the seven races, let's have a word about yesterday. I mentioned Nostrum. Uh, we were hoping he was the star, weren't we? And he was backed accordingly. He went from the front, but he got done by Epitectus. Well, he got done right. Tom Siegel made the point um, on yesterday's show. He said the form he showed last time wasn't absolutely top-notch. Everyone's going a little bit overboard. He, you know, he might have turned into a Group 1 horse, but... You know, he, he, he got pegged back. The winner's actually won quite cosily. Uh, Epictetus mm. uh, dropped him back in trip. 
did he out- outstay him or was it just a case of that's not just, just a better over it's as uh, simple as that Beaten Connections, James Savage seemed to think that the, the word he used was it was just like he had a puncture in the final half furlong, which was quite interesting, um, saying that the dead ground was totally different to the soft ground he'd previously faced and they were undoubtedly disappointed with the run of Nostrum. I wouldn't be giving up on him just yet, um, but it did look like he had a lot in his favour, positioning, etc. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, I mean, the problem with short post favourites when they get beat, there was yet to be one without an excuse that's been found for them. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're I mean, the ground right. was a bit deader than when it was. So what a load of nonsense! Isn't it? Absolutely <laughs> Come on, kills. rubbish. It's the final show. Let's give it some welly. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. It's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> no, I don't no, think no, it is. Though. It's I don't think it is. I think drying, sticky, tacky ground is uh, different than the the ground we'll see today. Yeah, that's been cut up yeah, and that's rained yeah, on. And, yeah, and if Ecuador Texas hadn't picked, hadn't picked him up, it would have been perfect for him. Like you know, he hasn't run a bad race. It was he? his second run got, back, wasn't it? That was a slight worry. If he hasn't run a bad race. He just got beat by a better horse. Yeah, look, well, no, I do. I agree with that. I do subscribe to that, that the best horse won the race. And at the end of the day, mm. best, the best horses have to handle a range of conditions. That's what makes them the best. The mile division still searching for the next big star then. Mm. Oh. I wonder if they might just try and well, not Paddington, him Dave. Just... Well, he's, yeah, but he's going to go <laughs> up in trip, Maddie, isn't he? And is he a star? Let's not go there. Um, uh, all right, okay, we're getting into heavy debate here. It threw me there for a minute, Brett. What did you no, well, I was just thinking, like, you know, because they, they were quite competent and bold on him. Obviously, thinking, right, we've got, we're on the best horse. So they, you know, they, they didn't take any prisoners, went out from the front. Mm. I wonder, perhaps, if they could just Im- not hold him right up, but just be a little bit less exuberant in the front yeah. and just try and, you know, ride a more waiting race. Because, I mean, he's set, he's set in the end. He had actually set the race up for, for the winner. And then punters, of course, you know, they just try and look at things boldly. They're thinking, well, at least we've got the low draw in the in the golden mile. Yeah. And That's what I was uh, going to say. Rip, <laughs> rip the rule book up and start again. Stall 18. That Horse has not run for a... I looked up at the screens where I was and I saw Johan. And I thought, <laughs> Brett's going to be eye-eyeing here, aren't they? I mean, uh, you were braced for yeah, Zachary Bain. Go. You were braced yeah. for, you know, so many others as well. Uh, you know, Latin and all that sort of thing. But it, Danny comes down the middle. Yeah, no. Away we go. Stall 18. Can't make it up, can you? No. That's what I say. You, you know, you can sit and you can discuss all the draws and so forth. But at the end of the day, if you're on the best horse and you get you get, you get get the best run, you know, you're going to win the race. But uh, no, a good performance. He's remarkably tough horse. Yeah, isn't yeah. He? Lincoln winner as well. Yeah. Um, Pops up in big races every mm, now and again. Just does something just fresh race, yeah. and all that sort yeah. of thing. And yeah. you can see James Dorr with a winner as well. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see it from that draw. But, no. Well, but I mean, every now and again it does happen. It's not like they always win. It's just that more often than not, uh, it's a massively low draw dominated race, but um, I think they got to the front and they were able to not go too fast and all the uh, all the really low drawn horses they wanted to seem to be held up and just found themselves way behind. Yes, and uh, it, that was a head in hands moment I think for a lot of judges. You said there wasn't it? Uh, moving swiftly on to the Regal Highfield Princess Maddie, that was special, wasn't it? I know that she was just vastly superior, but it was wonderful to see her go through the line like we know she can do. Yeah, I think because we had such high expectations for her at the end of last year, some people kind of, including myself, were kind of disappointed that she hadn't yet won this year, even though she'd run two cracking races at Royal Ascot and at York on her reappearance. But to see her do what she does best, travel as well as she does, Mm. other sprinters just can't do that. They can't bring that to the table. And that's what makes her really special. Um, just simply a cut above. Can't wait to see her in in, in the Nunthorpe in York. Favourite for the Nunthorpe. Yeah, yeah, no, good performance. I mean, as I said, it's nice to see. It would have done her confidence a bit of good as well. I should imagine connections. As Matt has said, you know, she ran two nice races so far this term, but you, would, you met a few people might have just been concerned. She really sort of got that same ability that we saw last year, but she clearly has. And um, no, she she probably be quite hard to peg back in that. You'd think. She'd be white lamb, didn't she? On soft ground, mm-hmm. is a pretty good sprinter. Uh, yeah, yeah, on soft ground, is a pretty good sprinter. I mean, a high field princess. She she handles anything. Uh, I think she also thrives on racing, so she gets you know a little bit better. I mean, maybe she was t- a tad under form for the second run at Royal Ascot, but it was a quick run back. But also, she's going to York as favourite. Absolutely blasted home in a non last year. Her run, first time out this season at York under a big penalty, that was almost as good as her non win. So she yeah. loves York. Mm. She's very, very much the one to beat. Mm, so we should see if her big heads goes there or something like that. So that's next month, of course. A word for Hamish uh, before we move on. It was quite a big SP in the end, wasn't it? Five to six on. Um, yeah. You know, looking like he might go four to seven. And again, punters just don't seem to latch on to him at short price. I don't know why that is. But he's a cracking horse. Awesome. Yeah. Magnificent horse. Right, well, and it just runs his race every single time. Give him a little bit of cut. Yeah. He'll be rock solid. Probably not not quite Group One, uh, but he did uh, he, he, he did um, 
go close in an Irish ledger, didn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he does just stick his head out and, 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 and try and try it, and if he's good enough, he'll win. Massive smiles from William Haggis, so it must be one of the our favourites, obviously. Yeah, well, owned by his dad, mm. and Maureen, um, his wife, looks after him and has done everything with him, and he was saying that he was actually quite naughty before the race, Hamish, and, and sort of actually made Maureen bleed oh, right. uh, in, the sa in the tacking up box. Um, <laughs> So I think he's a bit of a pain, a bit of a pest, but he's talented and um, he's just so reliable, isn't he? You can set your clock by him in those group threes. This is his third group <coughs> three of the year. His most impressive one yet, Tom Markin said it's the best he's, he's ever known him feel. Um, so maybe he would have gone quite close in the, in the King George. William did say when he faced Hookham, he beat him. You'd roll the dice in an art with him, wouldn't you? He's always bad ground. Can't run, he's a gelding. He can't run, he's oh, a gelding. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you know, he's in the e ball. <laughs> he's not going to run in that no. either. No, <laughs> no, he's not going to run in that. That's the race that they always yeah. wanted to get him in, I think, and get the winner. He's bottom of the ground. He, he must, but he could end Never up. Had his he ground. could end up in the long distance cup, couldn't he? That's a good shout. Uh, I don't think they think he, he quite gets quite home. home. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's that's getting old, and anyway, that's Hamish. Yeah. We love him. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see what they love in the first race. It is a one fifty. It's the consolation race for the Stewards Cup. Right, tipping hats on everyone. Let's get the market up. Okay, Zaman Jamil, uh, Roger Charlton, and his son, uh, of course, Harry. And what is the current price? Yeah, 130 um, with you in the back. We're paying four places each way in this. Qu quite a busy betting here, actually. Yeah, Zaman Jamal is our favourite at, um, at 130. Um, Monsieur Code has been very well backed. It was um, 13 to 2 now into 11 to 2. And also, Music Society has been supported 9 to 1. Um, from 14. It's a, you know, it's even though the favourites sort of 130, it's a wide open betting league. So they're very competitive. As I said, we are paying um, four places each way. Right, four places. Um, I'm not going to ask you who's going to fill the four, but what's the big tip? Uh, well, I've, I've backed two. I've backed um, Moshe, Moshe Cody and Capote Stream. I was looking through this race the other day. Obviously, we'd known for ages it was going to shut down with rain. I looked at it and thought, there isn't actually that much soft ground for me. Uh, uh, one of them is Moshe Cody, who is uh, just running right at the top of his form, and there aren't that many of them you can say say that about either, other than the, other than the jolly. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and he likes soft ground. His best three RPRs have been on his last three runs. He's rock solid. He, I think he's certain to be in the frame. Capote Stream's a little bit different, different, possibly a little bit a little bit better on good ground than soft ground over his career. But he has soft ground form good enough to win this from the mark he's now on. Because he's dropped thirteen pound in the in the weights this yeah. over the past year, and he's now, uh, yeah. Well, he would have been he would have got in the Stewards Cup off his off his rating last year, but he's but he's he's down here off a, off a mark in the low seven, in, the, in the mid seventies, uh, and I thought he was quite eye catching with third to wet Creano's dream last time, yeah. staying on again late. I watched that. Back. You can do that on your members club, by the way. Get involved. Look at these replays as we're talking. If you're going along with us and. I want to no, see I just a tad more from him. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, just a bit picky. I think he's starting to run well in relation to the mark he's now got, yeah. though. And at some point, he's going to, you know, he's only six. He's going to, at some point, he's, he's going to pop up. And there were three, there were three others that I thought handled ground and were worth a look. Music Society was one of them. Gives yeah. us of another. Cooperation, another. But the only thing we don't know is whether the Fav will. Because it was, you know, because it was very impressive. He's only six pound higher under his penalty. He's not well in because that's all the handicapper put him up. Yeah. But it was good to firm ground. He showed, he, he showed, you know, it was probably career best form at the time when he ran up and gone good to soft last year. But, you know, this is going to be completely different. And of course, he's a three-year-old against older, battle-hardened sprinters. Uh, so, you know, just not a hundred percent certain about him getting it. They were actually talking about selling him after the, after the last one. Uh, Roger Char and Roger oh, Charlton saying, "Well, we might just take the profit." Uh, or we might go for the Stewards Cup consolation. It's become a bit of a thing, uh, Roger's thesis obviously was the big one, wasn't it? You know, last year these these horses going off right. So, is uh, I mean, how are you viewing the five here, Maddie? Yeah, I mean, it's too. Sh I say too short. At, you know, one hundred thirty-seven to two. It's I guess he's not that short in context of what he's actually achieved and how much more there could be left. Mm. But I'm looking elsewhere, and the one I'm interested in is the one that Keels has mentioned, Capote's Dream. Um, back down off 75, last one off 88. That was at Windsor when who rode him? Tom Marquand. And Tom is back on. He's two from four on him. This horse, he is a bit quirky. 
and you are going to need luck. Uh, he's drawn more towards the, the far side, which you seem to think will work out okay. Yeah, oh. it's hard to work. It's hard to work. They, they wanted to avoid it yesterday, but they also wanted to avoid the stand side as well. Yeah. And they split into two groups in one of the sprints, and the far side group still won. But the quite nursery easily. was one, obviously, by the Fab, a, a rap pick, a rap pick oh, yeah. one, two, didn't he? And they came more. Sort yeah, of yeah but it side. wasn't. Yeah, but no, they, they, they all shied away from the far side, but, they, but the ones on the far side still, that, that still produced the winner. So, um, whether the ground yeah. is really bad this side, I have a feeling, we'll talk about it when we go to the Stewards' Cup, I have a feeling they're just going to all bowl down the middle now. Yeah. I think it's one of those scenarios where just don't let it put you off at the no. end of the day because we don't know what's going to happen and Capote's Dream, I think, yeah. is quite a big price now, actually. Um, I think Tom Marquand, I'm going to have a big shout for you here, I think he's one of the best jockeys in the world. Well, yes, I, I'm Tom the Pom, they, uh, the Australians will think that as well. He is key to Capote's Dream because, yeah. again, watch it back, as I said, at Newmarket last time. He wants a bit of shoving and a bit of strength. He wants that, mm. you know, Tom. Yeah. Tom's style on board. I and he wants totally delivering. And look at how yeah. Tom's done that this week. Yeah. He did it with um, yeah. the King's Horse, and he did it again with Hamish yesterday. He's mustard, isn't he? He's just very talented. So Capote Stream, I think, uh, slightly tentative selection because, you know, his recent form hasn't been up to yeah. scratch, but it has been promising. Some decent runs, and he's had excuses too. Been slowly away, clipped heels recently as yeah. well. Um, so I think in terms of one who I would play at a bit of a price, he, he ticks a lot of boxes. Has the left sofa mentioned the winner yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I quite, to be honest, I haven't got a strong opinion, but I probably I think if the favourite handles the ground, I probably I think it's still very exposed and, and you know could be quite interested, could be quite a progressive sort. Interesting, Mally says Tom Marcan's one of the best jockeys. He's eleven to ten with Unibet to ride just one or more winners today, so that's not a bad bet. Got plenty of decent chances. Nodding yeah, away. Yeah, not Nodding bad. away. Uh, I don't think you've mentioned the winner yet. I think Live in the Moment is a really big player. I'm not worried about the draw. Forget his last run at Hamilton. They, he's, been, he's been thinking about things, I reckon. Uh, but Sherrick Mode, he takes off seven. He loves soft ground. His one run here was in much better company when he's got his zero. And he is p probably the best handicapped horse in the race. I also have had to have a look at many a star who has got a first time tongue tie on, and I'm reliably informed, is absolutely eating up the ground at home. So last year's winner, of course, and is, is waiting to repeat the feat. So they'll be my two here, but um, I will be against this fav big time, unlike a lot of people. So that's how we're looking in the first. A reminder of the tips then, which one on top? Uh, Monsieur Cody, just because he's the, uh, he's the consistent one in, in, in form. Do you know what, I looked at Fahey's record in this. Mm. He's had two places from 28 runners. He's got, that's got to change, hasn't it? Oh. Just don't think, but I looked at it, I'm like, that's one of the, that's just like Richard Vine in these oh. sprints. You just think it's a weird one, isn't it? Obviously, a changer like Kills is expecting Maddie. Yeah, right down in the weights, Capote stream for, for Tom Marquand and Tom Ward, who could have a big day with his filly in the Lily Langtree as well. Oh, we're getting to that. Brett. Music, that. music no, Music Society. Oh, right. had a, bit of, a slightly bigger price, been wide back to as well. All right, OK, and I'll put Live in the Moment to come back to form. Uh, he's a right old guy on his day and I think he wants a six now. That'll do, right, now shall we get another handicap for you? Go right up in trip here, shall we? And uh, some, <laughs> some very interesting horses here. But again, it didn't work for Corrish Monami, did we? But Sweet William is off the Gosden and Thady, you know, uh, John and Thady train, isn't he? And he's gonna be really well backed here. Yeah, it has been, 94, clear market leader. Of course, this is the same distance as the as the e ball, um, Sweet William has got an entry um, in that race. Um, steady away at 94, hasn't really seen much, much movement. There have been a bit of support though for a few others in it. Uh, you can Glen, 14 to 1 from 20s, the mount there of uh, Paul Warren for Jim Goldie. Mr. Curiosity, 12 to 1 from 16s, and also Torcello. This has been strongly supported into 16s from, from 22. I, it's, I think this is a decent race. I quite like HMS present here. I was, I was at Foss Lass on, on Monday and um, Russell Ryan was, was, was asked to, to speak to, go, you know, go through a few of his rides. Um, and this was the first horse that he nominated, looking forward to getting back on. Should like the grind, be doing well since being switched to Alan Kings from, from Eve Johnson Horton. So, H.M. of present, a son of Exceleration, who excelled on these sort of grind conditions. He's well known because he looked mm. like a boat at times. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I, <laughs> I wish you well with that project. Uh, and let me come to you, Maddie, here, because uh, William Haggis has one here. He's won this with Harris Tweed, Hamish Cullens. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, he's a bit of a favourite of mine, post impressionist, because he got beat at Haydock when he should have won, I think, last year. And then when he went to York, I just had a good go on him. And I really, really like him. It was really, really soft that day. Forget his run, I think, in the Northumberland Plate. That was a very tough task on the way back. 
and I can see him going really well here. But you said to me, what did that, I say that, they, that they're not sure they think they can beat the fact, yes. which is what everyone in racing is thinking about this week, William, after Newbury. Yeah, I'm never afraid to take a favourite on and I'll get to my selection in a minute. But yeah, he's clearly looked hugely progressive. Post-impressionist William just said, you know, it was a big ask in the Northumberland plate last time. Not sure he quite saw out the trip on that occasion, but they think Sweet William is definitely the horse to beat. Um, I'm glad to hear my selections come for a little bit of money because I really like Torcello here. Initially, I was drawn to his latch code for the Moors, um, but then I just looked down at Torcello's form. Uh, and he ran really well at Newmarket the start of the season behind HMS President and Adjuvant. You remember he made that huge front running move yeah. uh, and they only just caught him. He's miles better off with those two on this form. Um, that was a great run. Loves soft ground. Look back through his form. Every time he encounters soft or heavy ground, he runs really, really well. Last time at Newmarket, that was on a faster surface. I think you can forget that. Joe Fanning's on around Goodwood, very good front running rider. And we've seen it, we saw it with Quickthorn, my good pal Quickthorn, earlier on in the week, how these jockeys can dominate from the front. And I think Torcello is another prime candidate for that. Uh, what price is he, Brett, at the minute? 16s. Ah, well, 16s, the value is going, but it's still big enough for me. I, I, was, I thought he was gonna say bigger than that, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, he should definitely be, be in the lineup if you're considering having an each way bet in this race. In very well known colours, of course, of Dan Gilbert. Uh, who likes to have a go at his horses. Uh, Keels, this yeah. is your sort of race. Yeah, it? it's very much my sort of race. I mean, he was he was on my shortlist list because he does like soft ground. He was only just touched off by HMS President and Newmarket as well, wasn't he? So, on soft ground. So, so yeah, he's a player. Um, he, he, the, the race does revolve all around mm -hmm. Sweet William and whether he handles the ground because this is, obviously, it was quick at, at Newby last time. It's very slow. It's going to be very slow today. He is a half-brother, of course, to Hurricane Lane who loved it soft, the dam. Uh, the, the, the dam was a proper mudlark, so uh, you'd have to think there's every chance that not only will he go on it, he'll relish it. And mm. you know, he's almost favourite for the e ball now, and he needs a penalty to get in. Uh, so you know, he, 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 it's one of those where you can actually see him just hacking up. But I can't, I have backed a couple of short priced ones this week in these big handicaps, and they've all sung without trace. Well, balance mm. play worked out for you in the last season, yeah, but that's not a big handicap, that's not big handicap, that's a class three. Well, you've got to remember, some of the races at Goodwood uh, would not be out of place. But it's still a short yeah, Some of the races at Goodwood would not be would not be out of place at Beverly and oh, Wind. Come on, and, you you've actually I mean? said that on Let's the show. Let's face it. Well, no, but it's true. It, it's, it's true. It's like you well, know, I was some doing of the, the rounds yesterday, so, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but some of the festivals that, that we have, they do not have top class racing for every single race. And so we've got class fours and threes here all the, all, all the time. It doesn't matter. They're, they're good races. I like punting them. It's, it's but, but in the big, really, really big handicaps, there are always others in the race that are well handicapped, could have a bit more coming. He's a latch coast, very interesting because he just yeah. keeps winning. And he's winning very easily. He doesn't have any soft ground for but he's by fast company. Uh, I it, really like plenty him. plenty it's plenty of soft dig. brown horses yeah. like you know what I mean and the fact that you know, yeah, well, that is I'm, dig. perhaps they've even been waiting to run him on soft ground so, so he's a massive player but the one I backed is Mr Curiosity now he's a six year old but he's mm -hmm. lightly raced for one and, was he ripping last time uh, it was yeah. yeah and he beat a good horse whose name I can't remember now uh, last time and just just got up Chilling um, Chilling Chilling that's well, the one man, well done Maddie yeah, see, see, that's for, see when you're young when you're young you've still got you've still got memory <laughs> cells haven't you you nearly uh, <laughs> burnt the Raisin Post Airbnb down didn't you by leaving some toast in the grill this morning don't worry finance put some, still to put some toast in the grill just forgot all about it <laughs> couldn't turn, you know where you are we couldn't, we couldn't turn the fire alarms off either so I was going mad like you know sore ears for a lot but that's just me uh, but yeah so anyway he's very good Mr Curiosity he's yeah. only run 13 times as a six year old he's had his problems he's a big boy isn't he, he was very impressive when he won over uh, one mile six furlong earlier in his career and oh, he's a, you know he's a proper bog slogger he will love the ground uh, and bog you get, you're, you're going to need a you're going to need a you're going to need a tough horse here so I quite liked him well, right. who's the best bog slogger in the race then for <laughs> it's going to be HMS president well I was going to I think I have put HMS president as my tip but I'm I'm sort of more inclined now to, to head towards Sweet William um but no, yeah, Sweet William for me, but HMS President to, to be thereabouts as well. Yeah, for the, of course, the, the production line that produced Gregory, of course. Mm, yep. All right, reminder of the tips then, Mr Curiosity. Yeah, Mr Curiosity for me. 
and talk. Torcello, but chuck in um, he's a Lachico in the in the forecast as well if you fancy. Oh, yeah. you're getting cocky. I'm the Securio, forecast, strikecast, <laughs> a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, we're coming to a big handicap by the way next and I've seen Kills' as tip and he's going to contradict himself massively in the 335 because he's gone for the short price favourite in that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying this, I was going, oh, he nearly burnt the place down yeah, I forgot he's, forgot, he's gone for a rat's yeah. head. So he's got, not, I'm sure you've read it in the paper by now, but uh, where's the men in the white coats for yeah. Kills? Um, all right, okay, but we've got group race action coming up first. Uh, and it's the three o'clock, it's the, it's the Lily Langtree. And we've got another hot pot here. There she is on the bottom of your screens. She didn't fire in the Hardwick. She's got really good soft ground form and it is free wind. Will she blow them away? Well, you think so, wouldn't you? Um, it's, it's, it's at least just got one sort of short price favourite on the card today. She's four to five, as you said. She was perhaps a bit disappointed last time in the Hardwick behind um, Power Driver, but she won the Middleton before that. She's four to five with us. Um, we've not really seen anything for anything, anything else to be honest. Gar has been nibbled at number seven on the card. Um, the other runner for John Gosling, 14s from 18, got the hood on for the first time. Um, a very, very, as you would expect when you've got a short price favourite like this, a, a very quiet betting heat. Mm, all right. Uh, Frankie's farewell to Glorious Goodwood. It's been going okay, yet? hasn't it? <laughs> He hasn't gone yet, Frankie. <laughs> That's been a long farewell to him, isn't it? No, no, I think he's going to. I think he's going to ride up to uh, up to New Year's Eve now. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? well, <laughs> it'll be <laughs> Kinross, Hong Kong, December, yeah, yeah, won't he? Yeah. So it just keeps being extended. Yeah. Uh, look, she's got very obvious chance, hasn't she? But I was chatting to Keels on the on the way here, and he was saying that he really fancied her. I would be willing to take her on at the prices because Kel surprise. I, I would. Yeah, well, that's just <laughs> my way a little bit, but. I was kind of disappointed she didn't run a little bit better in the Hardwick. I know it was a good race, but... She was backed, wasn't she, obviously? Yeah, I had high expectations for her, and I, I would have liked to have seen her do a little bit more. They're all going to have to improve to get to her, and she has proven on, on soft ground. But the one I like is Luisa Cassati, um, who I mentioned earlier on for Tom Ward, won the Daisy Warwick um, over a mile and a half at this track earlier on in the season, uh, beating Timelock, who... Is a fancy for many in this race, but I think um, this filly can confirm that form, and she should be okay on the ground. I spoke to the trainer yesterday. I think connections are quietly confident of a decent run. So, if there was one to beat the favourite, I, I quite like Louise. This Star. is just your sort of horse. This it really is absolutely <laughs> uh, kills free wind. She it back. She should be free at one on. I mean, just Woo! ridiculous. It's one of those prices where it's just it's just completely wrong, right? She's miles better than them. Right, she got beat three lengths in the hard way. I said, oh, that's disappointing. Right, she's disappointing because the market made a favourite and she had loads of ones next to her name. But she needed to improve dramatically to win the hard wick. Right, She didn't quite do it, but she got beat three lengths by a horse rated 124. I mean, the next best in here is 106. Imagine what she ran in here. They would have all been beaten 20 lengths in that hard wick. Right, she's got soft ground form. That race she won at Haydock last, uh, last year where she performed miracles having almost got um, knocked off the track. Uh, and then came through uh, and won going away really easily. That was on that that was on deep ground. She wasn't stopping. Uh, I don't see I don't see a danger to her. She's just miles better than these. I would uh, I might stick um, I might stick Gara in the forecast just because uh, just because the Gosdens have such an incredible record with a first time hood, uh, and she's in that. She looks like a, she looks like a, a stayer in the making. Her form's nowhere near good enough. Uh, but I might, I, I might stick it in just because she looks like a stayer. But three wins miles better than these. This is a, this is a gift price. It should be long odds on. Well, there's the clip for our social team out there. And if you wonder if Kills is still in the room, he's back with a bounce, isn't he? Uh, should be three to one on then. Yeah, I, I must admit, man, I, I, I find this difficult to see this getting beat. Um, you mentioned time lock. Give us the case for her a little bit. <coughs> Yeah, well, she's a filly who kind of hasn't had the chance to really show her best yet, I feel, from connections. Um, Jeb Montfilly, well-bred, has been progressing quite nicely, but probably just needs things to fall right for her. Um, ran well last time, just nipping back to Louisa Casati, actually. I, I think you can sort of forgive her run last time because she needs a decent pace to aim at. Um, Is and she this get it test here? of Well, maybe not, but she's getting a more extreme test of stamina, which I think will suit her. Um, they're solid fillies, they do have a lot to find, but I'm not the sort of person who will be getting involved in, in free wins price. For all, she can easily go and win. Rafe Beckett bounced back in no uncertain terms as well, didn't he, in the last two races, and his river of stars will be popular. But uh, hasn't run anything quite like this, but just with Beckett horses, you just mm. sort of expect them to go on it, don't you? 
for why that is, but uh, sh she'll be popular as well. Who is it for you, though? Yeah, um, I think the favourite is the most likely winner, but I'm just going to take a take a shot at uh, time lock for the forecast. Uh, four to five out to eleven to ten, then should be a lot shorter. Says kills. All right, so we're through. I mean, my short prize ones. I, you know, I even tried to take I feel Princess on for a bit of value yesterday. That worked well. I suppose Amish has gone. It haven't gone well for me. The short prize ones. Let's get this one over the line, Frankie, shall we? Uh, so just Maddie going against you. Yep, we'll give it a go. Luisa Cassati from Maddie. Right, okay. It's Stewards Cup time coming up. And uh, yeah, okay. Um, well, I think we've got a VT producer that'll be coming up about this. Uh, because Richard Hannon, Unibet ambassador, has been popping into the morning dash each, each day. And uh, guess what he had to say about Mum's tipple? And Mum's tipple is, is quite interesting for Paul Keeley in the, in the Stewards' Cup. Is that the way with him? He's the sort of horse, the better the, the race he runs in, the better he will run. And the faster they go, and they will go flat out in the Stewards' Cup. If he's behind the right you know, the speed and the right side of the draw, he could win any handicap. You know, On his day, he's as good as, as any sprinter. But it's just getting things to go right for him. But he gets a tremendous amount of support. Very popular horse here. And, Whenever people are looking around the yard, they go straight to him, you know, because they all know him from the day he won his sales race, 13 and a half lengths. If he gets back to that, he, he will win his Stewart's Cup. Uh, Mum's tipple, then, that was, that was you asking the questions, wasn't it, Brett, there, actually? And you asked on behalf of Keels. We did, yeah. Yeah, he's, just, he's, not, he's an old favourite of Mum's tipple. Uh, you know, when he runs, I backed him, I backed him in, a, uh, in the Wokenham, uh, and he's run really well. Um, he doesn't want that, though. He doesn't want what's happening outside. Pudding. That's the thing. He's a far, his, his best horse, his best form is on fast ground. So uh, I think he's going to have to wait for another year uh, to have a crack at a decent sprint handicap. Mad said he was drifting. What, what, what price is he at the moment? He's eighteen to one at the minute. Um, it's uh, obviously you'd expect lots of horses to be backed in this race. We're playing six places each way. Um, Orazio is your favourite at four to one. Not a bad draw in, in five. Mum's tip was actually was not a bit. It's eighteen from twenty, so so not not entirely unfriendly in the market. Bialis has been supported um, tens from from fourteen. Tactical, real interesting runner there for Julie Camacho. Have the wind up, got the cheap pieces on for the first time, and now into twenties from thirty three. So strong support for that one. Of course, used to be on um, or carry the colours of the Queen. Um, Ali's dance is an eight to one shot from tens. Another horse got the headgear on for the first time, got the cheap pieces. Um, Mr Wagyu tens from fourteens. Spanish star. Um, on the drift, act to 25 from 18s for Pat Chamins, who I think it was his birthday yesterday, wasn't it? Um, Sterling Knight, 14s from 22, and, and chairman of the board, interesting runner there, um, 12 to 1 from 18. Kraken in the race, um, oh, I've got no idea who's going to win it, but I'm sure, I'm sure Mr Keeley has. And Maddie as well, let's come yeah. to you Maddie, because we know what he's done, he's, he's, he's gone. Well, I've backed another one, <laughs> I've backed another one, but no, go, go, go Maddie, give, give, give Maddie the chair. Let's give Maddie the chair. Is he going to be chairman of the board? He'll love the ground, won't he? Yeah, he will, and he's a horse I've always liked. Tends to run his race in these big handicaps. It'll just be a question of whether there's something a little bit sneaky lurking for him. Uh, the one who I've put down on the graphic, there's a couple I'm interested in, but um, Julie Camacho's runners in this. We mentioned Tactical. He's definitely worth a look. Um, but significantly, he loves cutting the mm. ground. He's still actually operating on a decent mark. Um, raced off the mark, uh, marks in the 100s uh, not so long ago when trained for Carl Burke. Uh, he's drawn Stan side, which as much as Keel says he thinks they're going to go up the middle and I don't have a clue what the ground is going to do, to be honest, and what the draw is going to do. But traditionally, I like horses to be drawn nearest to the camera uh, in these big Goodwood sprints. Um, and he's just been improving. He's been running nicely. Decent run at Ascot last time behind a very impressive winner. He's coming to the boil. Uh, and he just looks like a well handicapped horse to me. The other one, uh, I'm slightly frustrated because Tom Siegel put up Sterling Knight. He's got that form with uh, Tan Marwi of Charlie Hills, who knows what it takes to win this race. Uh, Ed Dunlop for again, Tom Marquand, uh, and of course, significantly, I think Joe Fanning's on. So two jockeys I'm clearly thinking are going to have um, a big day. They would be my two against the field, but so many could run well in this. It's hard to have a really strong opinion, Dave. Yeah, and, and again, with sort of stand side draw, we mentioned the stewards yesterday, didn't we? Just said that Charlie Hills, who has a habit of getting favourites over the line in this race. Yeah, he say. has a habit of getting the draw right as well. Yeah, he's got he? the That's draw it. right. right. And when, so everybody was, when everybody was uh, calling out higher, and the early ones, he comes in first. The first one to go for yeah. single figures, he went six. Then he went eight for Tam Tam Mawi. Yeah. Uh, so it's you know he was pretty clear about what he wanted, and I'd imagine connections of the uh, 
Uh, of all the others were absolutely horrified to see all the jockeys stay over the far side in the very first race on Thursday um, after the draw had been made. So, so I'm not now 100% sure that they'll do that because you know when here comes when one won the Sussex in 2017, that was the last time it was soft in the middle of the week, and by the end of the week it was still soft. The entire field went over to the far side. Not sure that'll happen this time, uh, but I still half feel that middle to low will be better than high. That's how, that's how I'm playing it. Uh, but you could get it wrong, you get it wrong, you, you, know, you get these draw things wrong all the time. So uh, anyway, what I did say about Orazio, who I have put up, is I can't not have a saver on him. Because whatever you do, uh, with this race. I think he's by far the most likely winner. I think he's a potential Group 2 horse on soft ground. It just looked really, really, really good. Both, both wins on, on easy going, especially the second one at Ascot. Uh, and to finish sixth, I mean, they, they, were, they, they were apparently talking about not running, and he was 72 favourite for the Woke. He got winner. marooned, didn't and he? Yeah, yeah, but it, it was good to firm ground, which he doesn't want. Yeah. But, you know, so he gets his conditions. You know, and he could be a proper group horse on soft ground. He so actually didn't run badly at no, all. Uh, no, he didn't run. He was six. He's beaten two and a half lengths. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But, but it was, people were disappointed not, with it because they had high expectations. Yeah, exactly. Expectations. But I mean, the, if you listen to Connection, they said, we are seriously worried about the ground. Mm. So now they're not going to be worried about the ground. They're going to be absolutely delighted. So I think, you know, he could be miles ahead of his mark. He could win the race easily. Uh, if he doesn't, it's obviously far more open. The other one I have backed uh, is chairman of the board. Now, just, there's been a lot of money for him since I backed him, uh, which I'm always pleased to know. But I think, you know, I think part of the reason he was such a big price was because um, historically he wouldn't be getting in off his mark normally. Uh, but he has got in. I mean, he ran fifth to Summergand in this race three years ago on fast yeah. ground. Uh, and yeah, he's very ground versatile, but arguably his best form has come on soft ground. Uh, and he's just been, he's been running very, very well. Uh, okay, he was beaten at a short price last time, but he, just does, he does turn up and run his race in these yeah. races. Well, you know, and you know he couldn't get in the race for the last two years. He wasn't rated high enough, even though he was rated higher than he is now. So it's quite interesting. He, he's on my radar. I've got oh. to be honest. Yeah. If there is one that's a cut above, I think it is Arazio, isn't it? I'm we not all sure. Think that, don't I'm we? not sure. There's loads of young, improving horses in the no, race. There's another one. Is. There's another one who's in there that is potentially very well handicapped. I'd be concerned about the draw. Al Bashir, uh, who was obviously a very, very good two-year-old. He was very well uh, back to the week. Well, he was a week, massive. Yeah. Well, of course, he was a massive eye catcher in Wokenham because he was last with a couple of furlongs to go, and he's come through, finished about eleventh, I think it was, uh, and he was only beating three and a half lengths. And then at the cover last time, over six and a half, uh, I think the jockey um, Colin Keane, I think it was, he he, he had half an idea that I'm going to come stand side, or and then thought, well, no, I'm going to stay where I am. And if you look at him two furlongs out, he's cantering, absolutely cantering, but turned out he was on the wrong side. So you know, his problem is. He might be on the wrong side again, uh, but six furlongs on soft ground is absolutely bang on perfect for him. You see um, it every year in these great sprint handicaps yeah, that we yeah. have, that one is always, I mean, some again's a classic you know I mean? example. But he's, you know, this, this, this horse is a traveller. Yeah. Right? He's also a bit of a hanger as well, and he does hang to his right, uh, uh, which is what he did. They the usually car. come good at air when they've got their last opportunity yeah, to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you, yeah. Know, he's, you know, he's, he, he's got back form uh, that, that says he's very, very, yeah. very good. Yeah. But, you know, Look, so. Orazio, totally get it. And I, I can see it, and if, if, uh, the draw is there. What price do we think he'll go? If, if, is it going to be a case, Brett, if Free Wind hacks up that punters think, like, right, we're in, come on, all aboard? You usually get, don't you, before this race that there will be money come for, late money for something. And as you say, if, that, if Free Wind goes in, you know, this might be in quite a few people's doubles and others in trebles and so forth. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. But 4 enough is, four to one is plenty short enough anyway in a, in a, in a race. Well, I said 7 to 2 when you asked that question before. Yeah, what right, do you reckon he'll go off? Come on. Come on. Seven to two, maybe. Yeah, all right. Oh, could he even go off three to one? Can we go on? Let's push it a little bit. Or is it going to go the other way? I don't know. Because like you say, there's so many horses uh, back on it. Right, significantly as well. This is just a headache, isn't it? I, don't, throw, see, I don't see him as a, I don't see him as a drifter. I really don't. Let's throw mm. Bielsa into the mix because the one time he's raced oh. on heavy ground, he's won. Ryan's on. He's been unlucky in this race before with the draw. Do you remember at Air? He was the only one mm. to play the low and far. Mm. And of course yeah. he won when we were all off him. I want to throw Rumstar in there. Oh, that was Jonathan mentioned to Portman. me yesterday as well. Yeah, he was one I, anti post I, I thought was quite interesting because you always look for those three year olds who could improve and <laughs> has been running really well actually. Ran a nice race in the Commonwealth Cup, but I, I don't think he's thrown in off his mark. And he is a course and distance winner. Yeah. So I'd be quite interested in him if he continues to, to be a big price. Um, 
Go on, Jonathan Paul. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Small stable. letting you finish. I was going to mention another horse. Oh, right. Okay. Just chuck them all in. No, 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 no. All right, okay. Uh, this toast really? under the grill kills. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't mentioned Mr. Wagyu, of course. Oh, yeah. The one winner of the Seward Sprint. Absolutely. Is it four days too late yeah. for him? Five days too late for him. Fifteen well, out of thirty-four. John years. Quinn is having a marvelous week. Yes, exactly. He's had three winners and one get yeah. one get just beat. He's he's won fifteen out of his thirty-four starts in June and July, but has never won in any other month. Yeah. So you know, Tom, like Tom, we should be Tom's doing a pin stickers guide here and going through them. All <laughs> yeah. you know? But yeah, the stable is in red hot form, and he obviously is. Although he's an eight-year-old, he's well handicapped on past form. All right, okay. Well, I think we could do one, two, three here. We've got a bit of time oh, as well. as 20 minutes left on the show. Come on. I love to do exactors and trifectas in this race. I absolutely love it. Can I go first? Go on. I'm going to go Bielsa, Arazio, and Chairman of the Board. They're my three. They're my crew. Kiels. Uh, my, my three are uh, two of those. Arazio, Chairman of the Board, and Al Bashir. Mads. I think Arazio will be involved, but I'll go big or go home. I'll go significantly uh, Sterling Knight. Badry. You never go home. You always <laughs> only, only, only ever go big. Come on. Tactical Orazio, chairman of the board. I think just um, first, for instance, we're not pressing for tactical for me. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you've got to have a couple of the, darts. The favourite is, guys, the favorite is way too short. Of course, don't go silly, but a couple of darts. I told the guy who um, was picking the stall for Badry, I said, go low. He came out straight after. Uh, came out straight after um, the, the favourite Orazio and he went 18. <laughs> <laughs> no name drop in there. Well, that is the Stewards Cup. We've done the consolation as well. We've got two short price favours. Getting your one, two, threes, where do they figure? And of course, if you want to delve deeper and look at all the videos and the RPRs and the spotlights and read kills, Tom Siegel, Maddie's reports, all that sort of stuff, Keith Melrose, Graham Robway, you need to do this. today. This is the Morning Dash, if you've just got up with your uh, bacon and eggs, complex, whatever. Welcome along. Uh, Brett Williams has been with us for Unibet all week. Matty Plough and Paul Keeley as well. Um, let's draw breath, shall we? Um, we've got a small field, seven furlong handicap coming up next. Uh, you're on track today? Yes, yeah. This is going to be trappy. I'll probably be um, concentrating really hard at this point in time, trying to get work done. Uh, new business. I think has a lot to recommend him here. Um, very nice winner at Kempton, won cosily. Uh, not so good last time, probably was a little bit too keen in front. If there's one horse that I think is potentially really well handicapped, it's in. Yeah, I remember in the Wood Ditton they thought it was a certainty, didn't they? He just came up a little bit short, but that Kempton form is looking good. Uh, Brett, let's come to you for the market then. Uh, this looks like potentially the trappiest heat of the day and uh, we've got the favourite with Sophia Starlight who's in one of the ones he's turning out quickly. Yeah and as you said just just the eight runners <coughs> excuse me but very very tight at the top of the market so 72 Sophia Starlight from four to one has been quite well backed. Uh, Chartwell Heist nine to two from fives and also strong support now for Alpha Capture who's into uh, to 15 to two um, from nines. As you said it's a very very sort of well a smallish field in comparison with the races like the stewards cup but um the fact that you've got a horse who's favorite at three to one in this and the horse who's favorite in the stewards cup at the same price just reflects how open this race is yeah you know and the rag is ten yeah, yeah yeah all right okay uh, do you want to catch your eye? Give it a go, Brett. Uh, probably Chartwell House would, would be the one I'd, I'd be inclined to go with. Um, William Knight didn't train too far from here. I'm um, interested there's been support for it. Got some solid enough forms, should handle the grain. Uh, Son of Churchill. And so, yeah, Chartwell House for me. But yeah, I, I'd agree with Maddie as well. I think new business is certainly one you, you shouldn't discount. Probably the most local trainer now to go, but isn't he William Knight? I think he's very close. No, he's a new marker now, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Oh, he's moved. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Good knowledge, Dave. Uh, Amanda right. Perrett, she's near, isn't she? She's she's well, and that, <laughs> Manuizia, I think we could say, yeah. is probably the name. Yeah, <laughs> good old David, hope you're watching. Yeah. Uh, I might <coughs> look at yours in the next, by the way, David, if you're out there. Um, 4.10 then, I looked at this race and thought this is going to be trappy. I don't think I've found a nap in it. 
Have you? Which is very Dave Orton. How, yeah. How's that yeah. weird? What is it? Well, I, I really like Thunderball here. Do you? Oh, yeah, right. okay. I do. Uh, his last run uh, was over a mile. I think he totally got it. Go back to the Newbury win. It was a massive improvement on his seasonal return. He's lightly raced. Uh, Paul and Ollie Cole. Ross Ryan's on. Love the jockey booking. He powered through the mud that day. I know he was pulled out earlier in the week. because every ground. I'm told they were spying this race. And if you look at the premium, I mean, Knight of Thunder has got a remarkable record on every ground. He's 22%, I think, which for a top side is... is, is mm -hmm. That's is ludicrous. Really that's, really, that's as good as you can get. That's as good as you can get. And the dam has got loads of, you know, it's, it's from the family that they know well. And it's got loads of heavy ground in it as well. I, I, I did mention Ollie, uh, to, uh, to Ollie this morning, I said, is this going to light the ground? Ollie Cole joined him. He said, I hope so. You know, and he's going well. So uh, in, in a race where it's just a bit of a head scratch, I'm not, I, again, I like new business. Just not totally sure about him on the ground. I don't think you'd want to back him if he got really short, but he's not even favourite anymore. Yeah, Sophia Starlight, any any love for that? Yeah, I, I, I was one or, one or two I backed um, overnight. Sophia Starlight, it's uh, has already had one horse finish second this uh, this week and then come out and win again. I mean, it happens quite a lot of Goodwood, doesn't it? Uh, and Sophia Starlight, she's finished second despite the fact that the the, the saddle slipped coming out of the stalls. <coughs> yeah. Trump did remarkably well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we have to put, go a little bit of trust on very soft ground, but I think she'll, I think she'll be fine on it. I think she'll go well, uh, and there could be a fair bit of pace in this race as well. And although Scholarship has run three stinkers uh, lately, he had a soft ground win yeah. uh, the time before that, and um, you know, on, on, you know, on very soft ground, he's only a pound higher now, uh, and is definitely well in the mix if they go too hard because he could come and pick them up. Yeah. Uh, Urban Sprawl is in there as well. Uh, Jason and I are having a great week. Is he leading jockey at the moment, Hitman? Not uh, sure. Um, there you go. You can tell us out there, get your comments in. Uh, perhaps the producers can crunch numbers on that. Um, he's on Urban Sprawl. There's quite a few people out there fancy that. So a little bit tracky. I've, I've gone for one of my best bets in the, in the day of it. That will be Thunderball. On top of your two is? Uh, it's a star. New business for me. Who did I go for? I can't remember. Chart Chartwell House. <laughs> Scholarship. Chartwell Scholarship. House. Scholarship. It is that sort of race, but you're absolutely <laughs> right. But then I wouldn't like Captain Cuddles. Talking to Richard about, you know, uh, second run since being guarded. Ran well at Ascot like, last time. First run for, for a month yeah. or two. So can, can definitely improve for that run. And let's complete Seven the set one. because Alpha Cap Joy just keep waiting to bounce back. Because uh, he had some pretty good all weather form, but uh, it, it, I don't know, it, it's massive leap of faith needed there. We've mentioned them all in that. There are the tips. If you look at the screen, Williams, you can see. But they're liable to change in the next five minutes as well. <laughs> you've, met them, you've met the producers, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dave and Sam, oh, here we go. All right, we've got two more to come your way. Let's get some speed up with this then. Uh, a lot of chat about the maiden when we were in here this morning. Let's come to Bretton Hill with the market before we see what the left sofa thinks. Yeah, so this is just like 30, just short of 31 grand to the winner here. Um, so you can see why a lot of trainers have sort of targeted this maiden. And um, the favourite is a horse called Individualism, who's our brother of the two subjectivists, of course, um, from the Charlie Johnson stable. And ran a nice, encouraging um, start at, at air on, it, on its debut. It's your five to two favourite. Got entries in the likes of the, the, um, the Nashville Stakes and the Champagne Stakes. Um, support for Empire of Art as well, into 15 to two from tens. Tom Mark can rise this one um, for, for Michael Bell. Um, Richard Hannon's got three deputants in it. Um, Stratocracy is the shortest of, of that trio at nine to two. Um, <coughs> we went to Richard's yard about a week ago and we said, Connor, Richard, give us, give us a horse that, that's sort of nailed on for, for Goodwood. And he was very, very quick to nominate this yeah. Stratocracy. Um, so I was going to go all in, was waiting for the prices to come out. And as soon as I saw the decorations and the individualism was declared, I'm not quite so confident because I know they, ha they hold that horse in quite high regard. And I believe that had he won his debut, they were looking at sort of running in, you know, something like the, the, um, the, the Richmond or one of the other, you know, the, the group, the ra you know, races in the group. Yeah, that, something like that. Yeah. So the fact they'd sort of just come in here just to try and get a, a win under his belt, which suggests that, you know, I think he's, I think he's, I think he's the most likely winner, um, oh, yeah. which is a shame because I would have liked to, I'd, I'd like to back Stratocracy, but I'm sort of losing confidence a little bit now. A relative of subjectivist should be at the top of the market with a decent run under his belt, shouldn't he? Yeah, he should. Uh, this race is history. Some have had runs and won it. Some have won as debutants. It's just really hard to know where you stand. That's why there was so much chatter about it beforehand. Um, one of the fun things that we were talking about was Muhara, who was champion sprinter, of course, but it just seems to be the biggest outlier of sires for injecting stamina. Um, it is really, really bizarre. I mean, he's had a champion bumper winner. 
Uh, his horses just seem to stay really well as much as he has got the likes of Anaf operating over shorter distances. I mention him because he is the sire of one who I think, according to the Racing Post app, has come in for a little bit of money. Live and let live for William Muir and Chris Grassick. They're a team who do quietly well with their juveniles. Um, often they outrun their prices. I'm not saying that, that this horse is, is necessarily going to win, but I thought he was quite interesting on paper. Um, bred by Godolphin, quite a nice colt. Would like to see him in the flesh. Would like to see what the market will do. Um, but you'd expect with his pedigree, he mm. won't mind this ground and he should stay on strongly at the finish. It's gonna be a good really race, this. You should say. Race. Won by the Foxes last year. Yeah. Dutch Connections won it. Mm. Imperial Fighters DXB. won it. DXB. I was going to say DXB yeah. won it. Yeah. Kills. I, maidens aren't my <laughs> cup of tea, really. Uh, yeah. I mean, individual is, is obviously interested on pedigree. I mean, he was getting seven bail of the winner last time, wasn't You know, it, was, it wasn't outstanding. The 78 RPR. We had a, we've had horses running... Uh, we had two year running 90s quite regularly this season, um, first time out. So, you know, I mean, it's not absolutely standout form. Um, experience is a big thing. Obviously, coming around a bend over seven furlongs at, uh, at Goodwood uh, for two-year-olds. Um, the talk all week in, it, it has been about stratocracy. Uh, the buy-ins of court, who plenty, plenty of soft ground in, in, in there. Yeah, it, it was a really, you know, really good soft ground horse and does seem to, you know, the winners he gets seem to like a bit of cut as well, so that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, I'd just about put him up, but it'd be smallest bet of the week for me. Uh, we comes in, come in maiden instead, just not, not, I don't see him as proper punting heat. I'm a bit surprised no one's mentioned Devil's Point yet. That was a good run at Sandown in a, in a warm race, the Third Arabian Crown looks a good one for Godolphin. He fluffed the start that night, he cost 450 grand this. He's a nice type, Five isn't he? You've you, you, you got to imagine that when he was making his debut at Sandown, they thought, whatever happens, this will be his race, right? It's a local track, it's, it's David, he's in New Bay, he's gonna pound the ground. He's in one, so he's gonna to wanna to start better, but Ross Aran, I'm hoping he has a quick double here. They, they, they invariably start better a second time. If they, you know, the you horses, know so. you, you know, they're still learning, aren't they? They haven't, they haven't had one before, so they come out a bit slowly next time out. Uh, it'd be perfect. All right, okay, uh, reminder of the tips then. Let's get them up at the bottom of the screen for the team. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm going Devil's Point then. Uh, two for Stratocracy there, and live and let live. Uh, on top of the Plow. That's the penultimate race of the meeting. Would you believe it? We've got the finale coming up next. It's a mile one, and uh, someone on one of these sofas is responsible for a price crash. We'll get to that after we hear the market from Brett. Yeah, so we're paying five places um, each way in this. Uh, just the one non run at the moment, so 17 going to post for it. The favourite, and a well back favourite as well, um, is Liberty Lane, who's into nine to two now uh, from sevens. Real strong support for the card book runner. Could be a good afternoon, actually, for Paul Moran, who's got some nice books on the card. Uh, Fantastic Fox, nine to one um, from ten. And Dashing Roger, the other one that's been supported. Uh, into nines from 11 and one step beyond as well. Ryan and Gary Moore teaming up there in the lucky last into sevens uh, from nine. So, you know, again, a, a wide open betting heat, but the money has now come for, for Liberty Lane. Yeah, certainly not madness to be tipping the bottom one. Um, what are you going for, Brooke? Um I was going to go for, I think I put, put Liberty Lane, I think. I think yeah. it was Liberty Lane. I'll, I'll stick with him then as well. Was when, it? When, <laughs> again, yeah. producers, he's Willy Wonka's having a moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long week, guys, isn't it? Uh, look, uh, uh, Liberty Lane, when he made his debut at Nottingham, he looked a proper <coughs> horse to me. And his form with, is it Waipiru, when he came back at Newmarket, just looks all the better since that one went at, 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 at Royal Ascot. I'm hoping this is a raw rhyme. I, I just think soft ground is his thing. I really like this horse. I wish he had a slightly better draw. Uh, but he, because he does like to get on with it a little bit. They tried to hold him up last time and they're trying to get him not to do too much in his races, I think. But on soft ground at Nottingham, he looked an absolute... He looked almost like sort of Dante class to me there. And I, I think this is, this is potentially a really good horse today. But there is one here that is the play of the day at the Racing Post report. Well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting him to end up quite as short as he is. I mean, he was 28-1 to when, when the market first started. Dashing Roger. Dashing obviously. Roger. Uh, yeah, trained by William Stone, six-year-old, had some really good form a couple of years ago. He was rated as high as 104. What price uh, is he now? I don't know, he's about eight. It's ridiculous, but but he has, you know, it's funny because he has actually he's actually two from three on good to firm ground and two from ten on 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 soft. 
softer, but his soft ground form is miles, there's a million miles better than his, than, than his quick ground form. Uh, and, you know, and, he's in, and he is one on deep ground, he's one on deep ground at Sandown, one on soft ground at Ascot, Leicester on heavy, uh, I think. So he, he, does, uh, he does really, really like it. And he just showed on his second start this year, he showed that he still retains plenty of ability. He had a, ran, a really, ran a really nice race to finish third. Uh, and then he had a short break. And then last time out, he ran in the summer mile uh, Ashka, a group two that he had absolutely no chance whatsoever of figuring in given he's now rated 85. It just smacked of a prep for something else. Uh, and I think they've just, they've got lucky with the weather. It's come right. Uh, they've put Connor Planos on, who's very good value for his five pounds. So he's down on mark, you know, he's effectively down on mark of 80. Was rated as high as 104. There's ability still there. Uh, and he'll love the ground. Uh, and yeah, I think he's going to, I think he's going to run very, very well. I've also backed Great Gaddian, uh, who's another one who, who has shortened a fair bit. Um, he's been, you know, largely out of form, but it was bottomless ground when he finished uh, uh, close up in the Lincoln off a mark of 100. Uh, and he's dropped 10 pound. Uh, and he's got a right chance if he comes back to that sort okay. of thing. All right, Maddie. Final selection. I'm just going to piggyback on Dashing Roger. I mean, the price has come in extraordinarily. I mean, how much must you have had on this horse? You can't get much on at those prices <laughs> with anyone these days, trust me. Well, there we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, 104 rated horse, very recently. Yeah. Very interesting campaigning last time. Top class form on a testing surface is by one of the most standout sires when it comes to betting on the slop in Fast Company. Uh, I think he's going to run a big race. Brilliant. All right, so we're split for the first time then. It's the left sofa for the crasher. That's Dashing Roger and myself and Brett Think Liberty Lane will show his true colours on soft ground. Charity bet time coming up for you then. Uh, let's get them up, shall we? There's the final race selections. It's charity bet time. Maddie Plough, come on, it was Quick Thorn when you basically came on on Tuesday. <laughs> What's it going to be? In the 2.25, it's going to be Torcello. All right, you, you had to do it, didn't you? All right. Uh, Kiel's player of the day. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go Dash and Roger. I think everything is bang right for him today and is well handicapped. Unibet, of course, placing 25 quid each way. We've had a uh, quick thorn go in. We had a double, didn't we, on floor of Bermuda. It's gone pretty well for the charity so far. Brett, knock it out of the park in the final. So let's just hope Stratocracy can get off the mark <coughs> for Richard Hannon first of all. I know they think a lot of it. I am worried about the favourite, but... <coughs> Going right. to keep the faith with the Hannon horse. And I think Thunderball will go rolling home in what looks a trappy 410 for you out there. There are the naps then. This has been the morning dash this week. Uh, Mads, it's been great to have you. Good luck this afternoon. Thanks for having me. I'm hopeful there's going to be a lot of shelter and some brollies available because it's not looking particularly nice outside yeah, will we at the see, moment. Will we see you on more shows next week, front page or something like that coming up? Or uh, Not sure, but I will be. If it's not next week, it will probably be the week after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. listen, I, I hope you've been with it. They don't know. They don't know. Um, stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying all the shows at the, at the Racing Post this week. It's been a monumental effort for everyone at Goodwood as well. Uh, who noticed the Racing Postcast yesterday? Did it, did, has anyone listened to it? I implore you to do it out there. You know, it was Bruce Millington's last oh, no. Racing Postcast. Oh, I wasn't on it with him. Uh, and you, Devastated. Well, no, unfortunately, we took it away, but... Rodders and, and DJ were, and uh, he's a bit emotional about it. You know, he's leaving after all this time, October 31st, but this is his last one. He's obviously doing sweet spots and stuff like that. But that was the show, wasn't it, that launched yeah. you. Yeah. You can look back at them. We did it together, he just, didn't he we? He just went, right, off you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We had some great fun doing it, and it's been the catalyst for all this. And uh, got, uh, some old names were mentioned on it as well. You can check that out, of course. And uh, we're going to miss you, Bruce, that's for sure. And, and thank you, Unibet. And Brett, you've been brilliant, mate. I'm in it. You know, Willy Wonka has been absolutely the candy man this week. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Success is sweet. No, it's been a good week. Enjoyed it. No. You're not braving the course today, are you? Oh, I am. I'm there, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, last, okay. last day today. I see you there, yeah. Watch out for him in Masala Palace on the high street around about <laughs> 10 o'clock. And <laughs> if you're drinking wine, put the lid back on. Keels, <laughs> it's been a monumental effort from you as well. You've been doubling up here, there and everywhere. Yeah, I loved it. It was good fun though, wasn't it? Oh, I love I loved doing this. Just chatting about racing. I can chat about racing all day. And people can uh, buy your drink if you're there today, yeah? Cause, uh, cause be there. Yeah, I'll be there today, yeah. All right, I'm dashing off. Well done to the producers, Dave and Sam, as well. All right, that's it. It's the morning dash. Final day, Glorious Goodwood. Good luck. <laughs>